So I'm going to try this and just, just real quick and see if this works. Here. Can you hear that at all? Okay, that's just computer microphone. Just just checking here to see if taking it off of that helped at all. And it didn't. But it was working fine with the OBS. Why is GarageBand not? Let me just do this. And My shoulder hurts. I've been pass passing out on the couch a lot lately. Sorry, I know this is horrible content, and I apologize for that. I didn't think I needed to. I didn't think I needed to do any kind of a sound check. Okay, there we are. So we got that there. So that's that for audio. Now I'm going to go back in here and take this. Make sure I get it here. I'm there. And now I'm also here. Why was that? Why was that so difficult? I just had to turn it off and turn it back on. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go hot on the audio. Sorry. Sorry. Apologize. Sorry that took so long. So, anyway. It's been an interesting few days. So, so like I said, I did this the little, um, little Super Bowl party. I always pair up with Danny's Barbecue. And you guys saw that. Uh, I shouted out Danny in the video that I did from the, from the party the other day. And uh, Cornbread, for the longest time, has been paired up with Danny's barbecue when we would donate our time to say a fundraiser. So it would, it would be like someone would, someone would bid on having a, basically Danny brings his whole barbecue set up and, and like just cooks a shitload of awesome food and uh, pulled pork and beans and slaw and all the, all the fixings. And he pulls up and does all that stuff. And they auction off that with entertainment. And the entertainment is usually cornbread. But last time we did that, um, last time we did that, it was just a, a conversation throughout the band where it was like, do we want to do this? Is this the sort of thing we want to do? And I'm, I don't give a shit either way. I, I don't mind donating my time to, to do certain things. But... Anyway, so it got to the point to where I saw Danny recently at a solo gig that I was doing, and he said, hey, man, you guys want to be uh, partnered up with us again? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Why not? Because it's it's been a really long time. I keep burping up. I ate lamb last night. <laughs> haven't eaten anything today yet. But anyway, uh, so, yeah, Danny... Danny was like, "You want to do this? Do this gig with me?" And I was like, "Absolutely, I sure do." Uh, we've been paired up together a bunch, and it sort of seems right that we—it's fitting that we do this together. And I told him that I didn't know if the guys would be down with it, but I would—I would commit to something either way. Like, just it would be just me if uh, there was any issues. That it would be just me. So anyway, we did that. We set it up. Got the call, and it was for a Super Bowl party. Usually, we we try to say, "Hey, we we'd love to do this. We'll donate to you." And the only day that we have that we cannot do is Super Bowl Sunday, which it doesn't matter to me either way. Because I mean, I'm not a party kind of person. I'm an I'm a loner. I am sure you guys have picked that out by now. I like to do things alone. I like to be by myself. I really don't. I'm not big on like crowds or or uh, not being by myself. I'm not really big on being with other people. 
like being around other people and I, and I know that's odd and I'm not denying that fact but anyway that's beside the point so I when I told him that I would do the thing and we went we went and did it and it was it was really good I knew just about everybody there we had a really good time West Standish finished the show out with uh I will always love you by Whitney <laughs> and it was amazing and I know a lot of people got it on video by the way if you're watching this and you have that on video I'm gonna need to see that because uh, <laughs> it was awesome but anyway I did that and I would planned on leaving there and coming home and doing a quick talk while the Super Bowl was going on and uh yeah, I plan on doing that, coming home while the Super Bowl is going on, doing a little talk, and then just uh, watching the rest of the game. But they did at the party that – I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. I'm allowed to say this? At the party, there was a few people who, who had some squares. And I got a couple of them, so I was sort of watching for the squares. But as you can see, the game didn't, <laughs> didn't do a whole lot of changing. So one square won most of it. But anyway – Sponsored by Luden's Cough Drops. Anyway, decided that I would just wait. So I released a little short video, and for some reason, I was thinking that it was going to be episode one hundred two. I had I had it in my mind, I guess that I had it in my mind that um, we had already done episode one hundred one. By the way. Patrick Hanna is going to be doing the uh, the Harry Potter thing. We just uh, we just decided to postpone a little bit. He wasn't feeling that great, and I had a super busy day Sunday. I didn't even go to trivia yesterday. I had a really busy weekend, and um, I'm losing my train of thought a lot, and I don't even know why. I haven't done anything that would affect my thinking today at all and you guys you read between the lines and, and figure out what I mean by that like I've done nothing that should affect my ability to produce thoughts today I don't know what's going on maybe maybe all right so I was thinking about this in the shower while though what by the way why do all the best thoughts come to you in the shower I wonder why that is anyway so I was thinking about this in the shower why is it that I always just want to lay around and do nothing rather than like get out of the house and go like be social and maybe maybe like exercise a little bit or just get out and, and soak up some sunshine? Why is it that I always opt to do what is easy because here I feel like I'm going to either feel shitty one way or the other. Either if I get up and I do something and I get out of the house, I'm going to feel shitty while I'm doing that thing because I don't want to be around people and I don't want to like converse. I don't really want to like, I don't want to deal with that. Like if it's, if it's here at the house and I've got somebody in the chair then I'm I'm like that's fine that's really cool because I I get to I get to have control of 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 my surroundings then you know but if I'm away from the house it's just not the same and then I would feel shitty and just while I'm doing that but if I'm laying on the couch doing nothing I feel great while I'm doing that but I feel immensely shitty afterwards. Like, why did you just lay around? And you just lazy fuck. Why did you do that? Why did you just lay around and do nothing? That was you gain nothing from that. So it's either I lay around and feel feel great while I'm laying around, and then feel shitty after because I, I feel like a lazy piece of shit, or I feel shitty while I'm doing this thing and then feel great after because. I did something that I don't normally do because you feel good after you do something that you don't normally do. And like, especially if it's something that like 
somebody invites you somewhere and they're like, oh, I know you won't show up, but Adam Justice does that to me a lot. He's like, I know you won't show up, but so I wonder, I wonder why I'm like that. Is it just, is it embedded in my, in my genes? Is it, is it in my blood to just be lazy? And I don't think so. Cause like my dad's not lazy. I mean, he's lazy in, in, a, in a form of like when he gets home, there ain't nothing but like sitting around. There ain't nothing but like, there definitely ain't a lot of movement or activity going on. But, but like he gets out into the world and does things and like goes to, goes to and does church functions and, and such and goes and sings at churches and does gigs like that. And, but I guess those are gigs for him. See, I have no problem doing my gigs. I just, when I'm not doing my gigs or, or doing anything really it, it if i'm not doing my gigs it's just all i want to do is like stay home and like not really converse with anybody not really like i'll text back and forth with people or snapchat or whatever but i really have a hard time making myself want to be around people and i know that i've i've said this a, a, a hundred thousand times before but it's starting to actually weigh on me a little bit it's starting to like starting to realize that maybe maybe I should do something maybe if I maybe I don't want to be alone maybe I don't but I know I do here's the thing I know I do because I'm completely content when I don't have to take anybody else's brain into into the equation when I don't have to bring anybody else's mindset or thought process or any of that when I don't have any of that to to worry about then I'm totally fine with that I'm actually very fine with that but what if I'm not what if I'm playing a trick on myself what if my brain is fooling me into thinking that I'm fine with that when I'm not I'm still convinced that I am though just because that feels natural. You know when you do something it just feels right like a I feel the same thing when I'm playing music. It's like this is what I'm supposed to do. Like this is this is what I'm good at. This is one of the few things that I'm really good at and this is what I'm supposed to do. It just feels right. That's how I feel when I'm doing nothing by myself. Like just uh laying around catching and I guess I'm not doing nothing in those times. I'm still like watching shows and i know that watching shows is basically doing nothing but smitty said something to me one time was like are you studying for trivia like every moment of your life and i was like yeah i really am that's really what i'm doing like i'm i watch these shows just just to study for trivia and and i didn't go to trivia last night even and, and uh i don't really feel bad about it i just didn't feel like it didn't feel good and then then i i heard patrick say that he wasn't going to go so i was like yeah that's even that's even more reason for me not to go just if the the whole team's not going to be there um i really need to finish this cough drop off so i can quit doing all that like that well there it went but yeah i'm studying for trivia every second of my life and I'm really, really good at remembering things. So even though I'm sitting here watching watching shows or reading stuff on Reddit or whatever have you, I'm studying for trivia. I'm trying to learn things. So does it count as nothing? It still counts as nothing, doesn't it? But my uh, getting back to getting back to is it in my blood? Is it in my blood? Like I said, my dad's lazy when he's home. When he has nothing to do, he's lazy. Like I feel like if he has something to do, he'll do it. Like if it's a gig, if it's something that his work depends on it, or or something that he has put himself into, like like the church situations that he's he's always a part of. Uh, he's always a part of like men's club meetings and talks and, and doing, uh, 
like doing sermons and such for those things or or giving a talk, I think they call it. I think a sermon is is <laughs> uh, is reserved for just Sundays, but giving a talk for men's club meetings and stuff like that or doing a singing at a church, he's fine doing that. But when he's home, it's not a lot of there's not a lot of movement and I feel the same way. I feel like I do the same thing. Like when I'm done, I'm done. Like even when I was a kid, you send me home with homework, like fuck you. I'm not doing that. You got the wrong guy. You, you don't know who you're dealing with here. Like I don't, I don't, when I leave school, I'm, I'm done. Like I'm not at school no more. Is anybody else like that? Are you guys like that? Were you guys like that in school? When you get when do you, did you feel like you you were? Like I'm at school. I'll do what I got to do while I'm here. But when I leave here, I'm not doing anything school related. Like you kiss my ass, but I ain't doing shit school related until I get back to school. Is anybody else like that? Cause I have a hard time. I have a hard time doing things. I just stop myself mid sentence because I realize I, I don't do that with music. Like when I get done playing the gigs, I'll come home and I'll be in silence for a little while. But the next day I'll wake up and I don't have gigs for four days. Like like I'm in the middle of right now. And. I will listen to songs, like listen to a song over and over. I'll listen to a song on repeat until I can't get it out of my head. That way, when I'm playing it live, it'll just, it'll come out like it's supposed to. I do that a lot. Does any other, do do, do other musicians do that? I know I have a lot of musicians that listen to the podcast. Let me know, let me know if you do that as well. Do you guys, when you're trying to learn a song, do you go online and get the lyrics and get the chords and the tabs or whatever have you and figure it out that way? Or do you just listen to the song like over and over and over until it's embedded into your DNA and then get out there and try to do it? That's what I do. I literally just like, for instance, under pressure, we started doing under pressure and, uh, um, I don't think Smitty like, I don't think Smitty was as happy with it as uh as i was the the first he it was sort of like a okay we'll do it because you want to do it but that's the only reason but adam adam told me he was like man uh, i was doing a gig at drunken jacks the other day a solo gig and adam and tyler brown showed up and adam was like man i listen to under pressure dude it's just so good and then he was like i listen to just after that i just went down this road where i was listening to nothing but queen for however long and by the way, Queen is just so damn good. God, they were good. And uh, yeah, but listen to some. Listen to go back and listen to Queen. They they just every every song that you hear, you're like, this was the best song ever. And then the next song comes on, and that's the best song ever. They really they really didn't miss a lot. They didn't have. I don't think that Queen had a single song that I could be like, yeah, I could do without that one. I think I really need all of those songs in that discography. But anyway, uh, we were doing Under Pressure. We did it once at the 1,000th gig, 1,000th show. And I said, hey, we're going to do it. Just a heads up. We're going to do this tonight. I've been learning it. I've been listening to it. You guys know this song well enough probably to just fall in and figure it out. But there's a lot of changes in, in that one. There's a lot of changes in Under Pressure. There's like the the vocal the vocals are on like a different tempo in certain spots than the music is in, which I'm okay with that. Like I, I can, I can sing in a different tempo than I'm playing in. If that makes any sense, just, just as long as I've heard it be done. Cause if I can hear it, usually I can, I can I- emulate it, but we started doing it and it went okay at the thousandth gig, but then we played the other night at Bubba's, and we did it. But and, and I was talking to Noah. Noah was working that night, and he said, "Dude, when y'all did Under Pressure, he was like, that was when you really got the crowd on your side. He was like, they were already on your side before, 
but that one really got them on your side. Like, like you won the crowd over with that song. And I was like, dude, it felt like it because we just, we nailed it. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to brag or anything, but we nailed under pressure. And it's really, that's a really difficult song to do. We had brother Gary flowers with us playing the harmonica. And I think that he knew, he knew a lot of like the, the vocal accents like with David Bowie and Freddie Mercury going back and forth a lot. I think he, he picked up on some of those. So he was doing some of those like super high parts that I wasn't getting to. And it was, it just ended up going really well and we finished it off and we ended it just like queen does. And we pretty much did it like studio accurate and I'm happy about that because it's going to come out like us anyway because it's us doing it. But if we do it the same way that they did it in the studio, it's still going to sound like us because we're playing it. Just like Weezer, Weezer did a did a perfect cover of Toto, but it still sounds like Weezer because Weezer's playing it. So it's like the whole thing like, oh, man, I want to make it my own. I want to do it my way. Like, yeah, you're going to do it your way anyway because you're doing it. But the way that they did it, is is already perfect like their their orchestration their 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 whole setup of how the song set up is perfect already so why screw with that but that's that's perfect like they've already they've already done it right so if we do it like that it's just going to be us doing it perfectly like us so anyway i don't know where i was going with that thought but but like for instance does any other musician do that? Like just just listen to the listen to the thing over and over and over, and you already know what key it's in. You know, like I'll, I'll look. I rarely ever do I listen to a song with a guitar in my hand. I'll usually just listen to it and listen to it over and over and feel like figure out okay this is what the progression does, and I think of it in in a in a sense of numbers like the Nashville number system rather than what chord is it actually in so it, for instance and I might be speaking Greek to somebody who doesn't know anything about music here but for instance if the song is G C and D that's not G C and D in my mind that's a one four five which means that I can change that G to any other any other key that I want to and it'll still be one four five. So like for all right, I'll give you I'll give you a breakdown on this natural number system for those of for those of you who don't know what this is, like da na 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 like going going for your scale, like being like the do re mi scale, instead of it being do re mi fa so la ni no, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is just one again. One, two, three, four. So like you're you're going one, two, three, four, and five. Like one, four, and five is basically your your core notes in a major scale. Are you with me yet? Have I lost anybody? I'm sure I haven't even gained anybody on this one. But uh anyway, when you're doing stuff like that, it's easier, I think, to listen to it and figure out what where they are. Like, okay, this is a one, this is one hundred percent a four, this is a six minor. So doing it that way makes it to where you're comfortable vocally, no matter where you have to play this song. So if you think and look at the chords, it's like, okay, this song's in G, but man, G's kind of high for me. I really would rather do this in E. That'd give me a little bit more comfort vocally, like to where I can hit these notes. Like uh, for instance, I do that with um, Creep by Radiohead. I think that the original version of that is in G, but I drop it down to E, which is basically E F F sharp G. You're you're like four frets away from it being ideal vocally for me. So I drop that to that. I drop the G to the E, and it makes it more vocally comfortable. And I believe that that's 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 a beneficial to an artist or to a musician to be able to think of it like that or cover artist rat rather if you're doing original music you can put it in whatever key is comfortable for you anyway but doing covers i think that it's smarter to just figure out what the progression is and then find out what's comfortable for you vocally and just plug that key into the progression does that make any sense if i lost everybody already 
I'm sorry. I should have made plans on this one, but who cares? I I got I got to figure out. I know I'm bouncing all bouncing all around here. I'm sorry for that. I got to figure. My sinuses. Uh, I keep. It's it's like warm today, warm as shit. I'm wearing shorts right now, and I was outside a while ago. It felt great, man. What is up with this shit? Like I had yesterday morning when I woke up, my heat was on. Like I had my heat on yesterday, and like I walk out of my room, and I'm like, man, I'm feeling extra slimy today, like extra sweaty, and just I have a lot of hair. Hair creates sweat. I have a lot of that. And I was just, man, I just feel sweaty. And I look at the look at the thermostat. It's like 75 degrees in my house. I'm like, how did this fucking happen? It was just cold. It was just cold. I'm walking around with a hoodie on last night. What is why is that? And now and now, listen, all this stuff that's going on in Chicago and all the all the cold air up there and then our president's like, oh, yeah, well, what about global warming? Or however he does it. And I'm like, is that, is this, global warming's a real, real thing. And if you don't know, if you don't believe in global warming, check out the tides in Garden City or Polly's Island when the high tides hit. Tell me there ain't more water in the, out there in the, in the ocean than, than normal. I'm sorry, but you tell me tell me if that doesn't make any sense to you or not. And another thing, speaking of out there in the oceans, I read this article that uh, old Joe Rogan shared the other day about cruise ships. Did you know? You know what? I'm gonna bring this up. Let me let me let me get in here. Um, I don't know. That's not going to work. So, he was talking about cruise ships the other day. And let's see if I can find this article here. Basically... He was talking about how cruise ships use or emit so many more harmful fumes into the atmosphere than I and I this is the reason I wanted to look it up because I want to get this number right of how many cars Okay, so basically while I'm looking while I'm scrolling for this, I'll tell you. So even when a cruise ship is docked, they have to be constantly running. And they're running with the worst of the worst fuel, like the lowest grade fuel that you can get. So it's... I'm having no luck finding this thing. Damn, he tweets a lot. Um... But yeah, so basically, even even though they're in, even though they're in the uh, like docked, it's basically a moving hotel. It's basically just a rolling, uh, or just a just a, a floating hotel, and they have all of these freezers and bars, and and then you you go to think about it, think about all the <laughs> what. <laughs> Elvis doing karate. Uh, But yeah, you think about this. You think about all of the bars that are on a cruise ship, right? And I don't know. And I know a a lot of of my listeners are familiar with the bar industry. Think about how much power or, or electricity that a bar is pulling just in coolers. Just in coolers alone. Don't think of anything else. Just think of coolers. Like, all of these bars that I have ever been around have multiple coolers. And even on cruise ships, you've noticed 
Yeah, I can't find this thing here. Um, hold on just a second, guys. Here we go. I Google cruise ships bad for the environment, and look at what what comes up here. All of these. How bad are let's slate dot com? Is that is that a credible source? Here we go. So I'm trying to find here. Oh, wow. In Alaska, let's see. In a recent EPA survey of boats operating in Alaska, cruise ships reported generating an average of 21,000 gallons of sewage a day. Those ships also produced a daily average of 170,000 gallons of gray water. Ugh. Okay, gray water can contain dis detergents, oil, grease, and food waste, as well as oxygen-depleting nutrients and various pathogens. Yuck. I hadn't even thought of that. I was just thinking about the stuff that it's putting in the ozone layer. The oceans are capable of assimilating and dealing with raw sewage through natural bacteria actions. According to the International Convention that regulates ship pollution... However, all members of the trade association that represent more than 90% of the global cruise industry have a policy not to dump untreated sewage anywhere. Bilge water also must meet certain oil content standards before it can be released in the ocean. Wow, I didn't even think of that. I was just trying to find out. Trying to find out about the... The exhaust, basically. See, uh, you look. Uh, I try to look up all this shit. I'm just gonna get out of it and just just get my own little. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll we'll figure it out later, and I'll I'll post some facts. But anyway, so yeah, cruise ships alone produce more harmful emissions. Is that the right word? Sue me. I don't give a shit. Cruise ships produce so much more bad shit for the environment than. I think, like, I'm not going to say a million, but some absurd number of automobiles. Like, basically all the cars in New York don't produce as much harmful, harmful whatever shit to the environment that one cruise ship does. And you got to think about how many people go on cruises. And I, I've been on two cruises before, but I can assure you that those are the only two cruises I will ever go on in my life. Because I just, I've really been trying to be more coherent about the things that I'm doing in my carbon footprint and uh, like leaving a better world for my niece and my nephew and leaving a better world for all my friends, kids and all this stuff. And, God forbid if I, I ever create a human, I want the I want them to have I want them to have the same opportunities that other people have. You know, other people have had. And as of right now, they might not, you know, like gener like I wonder how many more generations of humans this world has left in it if we keep treating it like we do. I mean and I look over here at all all the cardboards and stuff and newspaper things that I'm I take to the dump to recycle. And I was talking to Jeremiah about that the other day. Sup, Jeremiah? I know you'll listen to this. I was talking to him about it the other day, and I noticed that uh, I was like, "Do you do you recycle?" And I don't know what what started the conversation. And uh, he was like, nah, my parents do, but I don't. And I was like, you really need to start thinking about recycling. Just, you know, like get in the habit, get your kids to to get fired up about it. You know, like it's 
really cutting down really cutting down on your use of one use plastics and really cutting down on things that are just super harmful like it, to make super harmful to make and there's so many plastics that are just getting thrown away which like plastic bottles are the worst plastic bottles and straws that's where we got started it was straws because straws are the worst uh straws just they, they literally are the worst and nine nine times out of ten nine times out of ten if you if you go to a place and i've noticed this a lot in the bar industry a lot of bartenders will just as soon as they make a drink they'll, they'll put a straw in it and you give it to the to the people nine times out of ten those people are going to take that straw throw it out of the drink and just 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 go 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 ham on the drink and i've noticed that just in in just the bar industry but now places like dead dog have started using paper straws and the the they do get soggy it's a paper straw they get a little soggy after a while but dude it's just they're biodegradable and it's so much better for the it's so much better for the for the environment now jeremiah and his business they do uh they they have to have thicker straws because they do like uh smoothies and such so the size of the straw that has the size of the paper straw that they have to use is just like i think he said a three quarter inch in diameter so that's pretty ridiculous to think but it will be so much better for the environment and i encouraged him to to try to make that switch for his business but getting back to my point i really think that it's wise for people to try to leave a better world than we're getting and back to the cruise ship thing i don't want to continue to fund this i want whenever I want whenever my my uh, nephew and my niece, and if I ever have any kids, my kids, to when they get to high school, I want them to hear about cruise ships as something that used to happen. Like I want them to hear about cruise ships as a thing that they that people used to be able to do. But it will be like instead of it being like, oh, there was the endless chocolate fountain that me and Danny Evans talk about on Facebook all the time, or the the ice the soft serve machine that runs 24 hours a day or the johnny rockets that's on the ship or all the endless buffets or you call at like six o'clock in the morning and ask them for sandwiches and they bring them to you and it's like everything is free and it's just just glutton's paradise and i'd rather them not hear about that part of it rather they hear that these things were literally ruining our envi- like ruining our atmosphere that's probably the issue that all of these harmful and and, and i hear a lot of people out there say oh well, well well you know the volcanoes they put off more than uh than the, than the cars and the cruise ships all put together and just just one eruption yeah but you know what that's the that's nature that's nature Nature will balance itself out. Nature gets to do that. I don't think we have the right to do that shit just because that 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 that's a horrible excuse. That's a horrible excuse to continue to enlarge our carbon footprint. It's just a horrible excuse. You think about the the world in let's say 50 years. Are we going to still be using fossil fuels are we still going to be using oil i really believe that oil is in the same position as coal are we still going to be using that stuff it's like everything else has advanced to the point of where i can click a button and now i'm broadcasting live to the world that was unheard of 50 years ago like from my house from my my den right now, my my dining room basically, I am broadcasting to the world. That was unheard of fifty years ago, but we're still using this bullshit system of getting us around. I was listening to I listened to Joe Rogan do two podcasts yesterday. He had Sebastian Manicalco and he had uh, 
<sighs> Brian Redband on yesterday. And uh, one of those episodes, he was talking about uh, uh, Tesla. He was talking about he he, got, he finally broke down and, and bought a Tesla because he told Elon Musk he would. And uh, he was talking about just, just how much faster it is than how much faster it is than his his like souped up Porsche. He's like, dude, this thing is zero to 62 seconds faster than my souped up badass Porsche. And it's electric. Boogie, boogie, boogie. I couldn't help it. I had to. And it's electric. That's the thing. Is this, why, why is this not exploited more? And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because all the powers in the world, all they care about right now is oil. That's all we've been. That's why we've been overseas. That's why we've we've wasted so many lives and all this bullshit. It's all oil. It's all for oil money. And that's all people care about right now. But they don't understand that that commodity is out the door. This is not this is no longer this is no longer our game. This needs to this needs to stop. Like, I understand that it's easier for car companies just to continue to make these things that way. But I really want to believe that in 20 to 30 years, everything will have switched to electric. Everything will have switched to electric vehicles. Just And, and I just really believe that that could help the, that could help the economy and economy environment. That could help the environment vastly. And our, our goal should be to leave a better world for those who come after than just just making things comfortable for ourselves right now. And by comfortable for ourselves, I mean like going on cruises and such. I really don't think that the I really don't think that the cruise ship deal is is uh I want to make sure I say this right. I really don't think that the cruise ship deal is being taken seriously enough. I don't think that people are taking into account what this means for the future of the world. And in the same breath, I don't believe that people are taking into account what what not recycling and just continuing to just buy up case after case of water when and I mean in Flint, Michigan that might be necessary. It might be necessary to get your water bottled. But in a place like here like we have really good we have really good water filtration systems. We have really good really good tap water where I'm at right here in Merle's Inlet. Some of the best tap water in the world. That's what this jug's full of. See, I can't even reach that far on my shoulder. <clears throat> Jesus. But that that's... It's delicious. And I, I don't understand... I don't understand. I understand that it's easier. And one of my buddies, Charlie Gray, used to say, Man, I drink more water when I when it's bottled. Like, I drink I drink more, bottled, more water when it's bottled. And... Ba- the the same used to be the, the it used to be the same case for me, but not anymore. Like I, I I definitely drink at least one of these a day, at least. Sometimes sometimes I'll drink a couple, but at least I drink one of these a day, and that's sixty four ounces. That's like a half a gallon of water a day. So that's pretty good. And I don't know. I just I really really want. I really wish that people would understand more about the world that we're leaving for the the kids that are on the the, the babies right now they're going to grow up and they're going to be pissed off at us because we didn't do the do more to leave the world in a better better shape for them or worse or worse they won't be pissed off and they'll continue on the same path that we've been when we've been continuing on and we're just leaving this this world like a like a uh, a park and, and when they have a picnic in Mad Men and they just pick up the blankets and they just 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 like tumble all the trash down the hill like they just dump all the trash there down the hill and uh, like back in the day when you used to be able to just 
go drive down a dirt road somewhere and just just throw the trash off the side into a ditch, just dump trash off the side of the road. That used to be a deal. There was an old, uh, just uh, just like that Alan Jackson song. Uh, there was an old dirt strip. We used to dump trash off a of thick pin road. Like that's that was a normal thing. People used to go dump trash off the side of the road. Like it was just it was just normal. Here's the thing. And what I was talking, going back to what I was talking to uh, with Jeremiah the other day. How hard is it to just separate your separate your things? Get a plastic bin from Walmart, throw all of your plastics in it, rinse the shit out. If it's something that had food in it or something, just rinse it out, throw it in the plastic bin, take it to the dump once a week. By the by, in our area, and I'm sure in your area, there's not it's not a long drive to get to a recycling like a waste management facility like a dump. It's not a hard. It's not difficult it's not something that's that's hard to do and it's so rewarding when you think that like okay all these plastic all these plastic items that i have that i'm recycling now like uh whatever or glass plastic plastic or glass all this stuff when you take that stuff to a recycling facility that stuff literally gets to have a new life it gets to go and be repurposed for something different rather than having the harsh fumes that are created by actually creating these plastics they can just be melted down and reused again now could there be any harmful fumes in the in the process of melting down these plastics and repurposing them maybe but i don't think that they're as bad as um just creating new ones. I really don't think that 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 transfer as well. I also don't know what I've been talking about the whole time. That being said, I really wanted to get those damn. I really wanted to get those damn cruise ship, uh, cruise ship numbers right. Matter of fact, let me. Let me just go here and look down my. It's been a while. I haven't even looked at Facebook today. Um. Oh, by the way, the twenty three nineteen. It can only work on February third, two thousand and nineteen. I'm gonna have to go back pretty far to to find this, but I know that I shared it. So I should have done that to start with. I share pretty good bit of stuff on Facebook as well. Pablo Esco Burgers. No, that's hilarious. But um I guess I don't have much more for you. I'm just trying to look and get some of these uh There we go. I just wanted to get some of these numbers right. Up Rocks, by the way, is one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite sites. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I was right with the million. The report says that a mid-sized cruise ship can use as much as 150 tons of fuel each day, which emits as much particulate as one million cars. Is that right? The response is that's correct. And the reason for this is that their engines run 24-7, even if they're in the ports. They have to keep running their engines because it's not only a, a transport mode, it's a hotel facility that have a spa on board, restaurants, dot, 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 and that needs a lot of energy. So, yeah, Joe Rogan tweeted that the other day, and he's right. This is well known, of course, one of the conversations that tend to resurface. Cruise liners are exasperating, exacerbating, how do you say that? Exacerbating climate change and causing health crises around the world. First of all, the particles. Cruise ships are pumping mind-boggling amounts of particles, carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and sulfur dioxide into the air literally 24-7. 
The biggest reason for this is that cruise ships generally burn the lowest grade fuel there is, heavy fuel oil. This fuel is a byproduct from the production of diesel and gas in refineries. It's amazingly dirty, and cruise ships are burning it nonstop because, as the post from Rogan states, cruise ships never turn the engine off. What's more, most cruise ships have not been equipped with any sort of filtration systems. That means all of those toxins are going into the air unimpeded. Even our cars have filters on the tailpipe. Studies have found that taking a cruise ship across an ocean averaged out the same pollution that would be put out by 5 million cars running the same distance. So one cruise ship driving across the ocean puts out more emissions than 5 million cars. The same amount of pollution. 5 million cars running the same distance. Jesus. The combination of lowest grade fuel and lack of any filtration makes this a dire way to travel. There's been some progress of late. Cities are fighting back against the cruise line industry by demanding they burn better fuel if they want to dock in their ports. Exhaust filters being called for as well. Still, there's a long way to go. Studies on the air around the ship and on board often shows the air quality to be worse than the most polluted cities on the planet where air pollution has become a deadly concern. This all seems like a big enough issue that cruise ships will be warning in the current climate of looming environmental disaster and so-called woke travel. Yet, attendance on cruise ships is the fastest growing sector of travel industry with the 25 million people taking a cruise last year alone. So yeah, we should all be having the same reaction as Rogan here. What the fuck? And that's literally what he said. Like, what the fuck? A cruise ship emits as much particulates each day as a million cars. I wanted to get those numbers right, but that's awful. I'm pretty sure there are a lot more container ships around the world that had to be burning the same amount. Guess we need to cut out trade in this country as well. See, oh, Brandon Elvis here. I love you, Brandon Elvis. I seen him the other night at Bubba's. First time in a long time. That's an issue, though. That sort of that sort of uh, that sort of mindset and those ideas. That's kind of an issue here. Like the fact that oh, so so if cruise ships are that bad, then I guess we're going to cut trade out as well. Like that's sort of a problem. That's not. I mean, maybe maybe. That's not the answer. Maybe the answer is to find out a better way to make these things work. Maybe figure out a better way to make these things happen. Like, to do certain things. I'm going to check this and make sure that we're still we're still rolling. Because I just noticed something on the YouTube video up there. Yeah, cool. But anyway, I, is is that... Is that how everybody feels about it? Is that how you guys feel about it? Am I alone here? Am I the only one who thinks that? That we should we should like not do the cruise things anymore? Am I the only one who thinks that? And then am I the only one who thinks that we should figure out a better way to do to run these ships? We should figure out a better way to power these ships. Or just get rid of them all together. Cruise ships are pretty fucking big. I'm pretty sure that if you were to stack the entire roof of this thing with solar panels, would that not solve the issues? Would that not produce the same amount of energy needed to, to run these things? Like, And I understand that you could have backup. Like, you, you, you know, that, that we should switch... We should switch the 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 focus from fuel and fossil fuels and oils and such to electricity and let fossil fuels and oils be our backup plan. Like, okay, if this cruise ship's out in the middle of the ocean and we don't have enough uh we don't have enough power from the solar panels to to run, then by all means use the fossil fuels. But let's make energy and renewable energy is renewable is, is is solar panels considered renewable energy or did i just make that up use the solar panels in 
in ways to or, or first. You get what I mean? Am I saying that right? Or am I just uh, see? I think when I'm not stoned, it's a lot easier or, or a lot more difficult to get get words out. I don't feel like I'm I don't feel like I'm as articulate when I'm when I'm like on pure air. <sighs> How you like that for a full circle coming around on pure air? See, I like. I don't know. I don't. I. Don't, I. I enjoy the way it feels. I enjoy the way it, the way it makes me feel when I when I'm stoned, on and I'll just weed. Like not, nothing. Nothing unnatural. I, I don't. I don't mess around with anything unnatural. Matter of fact, I've quit everything except for just weed. But I don't know. I feel like I have to explain <laughs> myself to people when I'm talking to them. Like I'm sorry, you have to give me a little bit. You know, I haven't smoked anything today, or I haven't, or I haven't gotten high yet. So don't don't worry about what I might say because I'm I think I'm a stranger when I don't. There's some <laughs> there's some bonus content for you. How do you like that? I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get out of here. I don't know what how long I've been going for or what I've talked about or anything. We're coming up on the hour mark here, so. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. What I will tell you, though, in in closing, out of all the stuff that I've just said and all the issues that I had with video and all that mess in the beginning, outside of everything that I've already said, and I want to leave you with this thought. Be conscious. Be conscious of the world that we're going to leave behind. Be conscious of that. Be conscious of... Everything that you do, try to be, try to think about how everything you do will affect those that come after us. I know that it's our, it's in our nature to be selfish. It's in our nature to take care of ourselves and to not worry much about what goes on in other people's lives or what what goes on around us or what what happens after us i'm sure that that's it's in our nature to do that but please try to take into account how your actions will affect those that come after us because that's very important and i implore you to never get on a cruise ship again i noticed that uh I know a lot of folks that love cruises and I really want I really want you guys to hear me on this. It's not worth all of the good times that you get to have. It's really not. Considering that we might be one of the last generations that gets to experience it, truly not worth it. So there's that. So anyway, I'm sorry I, I, I uh, totally went off on on tangents here, but um, I will be making up for it in the future. We got a bunch of guests coming on soon. Uh, me and Patrick are indeed going to be doing the uh, Harry Potter part one. We're going to be doing that uh, deep dive pretty soon. I'm not sure when we're going to do it. We had, I may be planned on Wednesday, but. On Wednesday, I'm going to have Brother Seth Scalera back on. He's a New England Patriots fan. And we're going to we're gonna go over to Super Bowl, and we're going to talk about that. That's why I didn't mention the Super Bowl or anything or halftime show or any of that stuff during this episode. So I'm saving all of that for later. That's going to be happening. Um, stay tuned for that. Yeah, let's see. Uh, my buddy, one of, my, one, one of the kids who actually went to – Stevens Christian Academy with me. He was uh he was a lot younger than me. He made me feel like an old man. He was like, Man, I don't know if you remember me or not, but I was a kid at Stevens when you were a senior. And I was like, All right, kid. <laughs> but anyway, he's uh he's wanting to come on and do an episode, uh Matthew Holtzclaw. He's wanting to come on and do an episode, so he's gonna be coming on on the I think the the twentieth, maybe. Let's, what did I put him down for? February 20th, I believe. Yep. Wednesday, February 20th at 5 p.m. 
Yeah, Matt Holtzclaw going to be coming in. Um, Joshua Gregory is going to be coming on to do another episode soon. I also have got Jamie Deluxe committed. Jamie Deluxe is going to be coming on. Um, Jamie is a, a, a massive online presence and very excited to get him on to um, – to talk about all the things he's got going on in in uh, in his world, and he's done some pretty high profile podcasts recently as well. And I'm very lucky to have him on. So that's going to be happening. Him and Eddie Tanner is going to be coming on to do an episode talking about uh, all sorts of things. Also, I'm not sure if it's going to happen or not, but myself and Noah Byrne might potentially be rebooting the Sunset Grill tonight. I have not heard anything else from him. I didn't go to trivia last night to to talk to him about it, but I'm going to be texting him shortly and finding out if we're still going to be game for that tonight. But anywho, all of those Sunset Grills, I'm also going to be uh, uploading those to this channel. So just uh, be prepared for that. You're going to be getting some Sunset Grills on this channel. And... Uh, I'm switching them all over to here that way to have all of the podcasts that I, I produce in one spot. And plus I have a wider listener base on this podcast and on the sunset grill as of right now. So there's that. But anyway, that's going to be happening. Things that I've watched. I really want you guys to go on prime and watch the marvelous miss Maisel. It's, I started watching it again. Like it's so good that I'm I'm already I'm already excited about um, watching it again. Like I'm excited about what's going to happen in the next episode, even though I know what's going to happen. I'm excited for it. So it's so good. I can't describe how awesome this thing is. Please watch the marvelous Miss Maisel on Prime. I also watched Polar and uh. Brother Will asked me to watch that the other day at, at uh, Bubba's and told me it was really good. Polar is very good. That's on Netflix. It's a Netflix original. I watched something else last night. I think it was called Into the Dark. Maybe I, I've got the 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 title wrong, but it's uh, Bernard from Westworld and uh, Skarsgård. Not the not it, but the one from True Blood. One of the Skarsgård brothers. Really good cast. It was a really good movie. And uh, I I enjoyed it. But watch that. Really good. Um, let's see. That might be all I watched yesterday. But anyway, watch those things. I haven't really been listening to any music. Um, but... If you're into Sweet Sweet, and even if you're not into Sweet Sweet, go to their page... Uh, they they have been except they have won this this thing. It was a competition for a live to vinyl pressing to where uh, they pre-sell all these records and they will go to New York. I don't want to say the city somewhere in New York to record these album these albums, and it will be a live recording that will be pressed directly to vinyl. And uh, I've already pre-bought the song that I want. And I think they're individual songs. I think they're singles. So definitely go and support them on that. They deserve it. And they are fantastic. Also, there's this big uh, Myrtle Beach food truck um, convention, maybe. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. But it's something to do with the Myrtle Beach food trucks. I know Oracle Blue is going to be part of it. Uh, maybe Sweet Sweet is going to be part of that as well. I'm not sure. I'm not completely sure, but uh, there's going to be a lot of folks that I'm very, very, uh, very happy with with what they're doing musically. That's going to be a part of this. So keep up with that. Check all that stuff out. I'm going to let you go because I'm talking about nonsense up here. It's been a long time since I've done a solo talk. So <laughs> just like I remember. But anyway, be good people in a world full of shitty people. Don't be one of those people. Be a good person. Audio folks, go check out the YouTube. Please click subscribe. I'm going to tell you all this in the beginning and an intro in just a second. For YouTubers, hang tight with me for just a second. So do that. And for audio folks, have a good day. Peace, bitches.
All right, YouTubers, hang tight. Let's get this intro going. Hey, guys, how you living? You doing well? Good. I'm going to go ahead and warn you, audio folks. This is a, this is a doozy. <laughs> and, and you guys know what that means when I say it. I've said it enough to where you probably know what I mean. I just, I wasn't, I wasn't really on, on par with anything in particular. I, I kind of just had a stream of consciousness going on for a hot minute and that's where, that's where we ended up. So that's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got to tell you about what's going on in this episode. So I talked a little bit about, uh, I don't even remember what I talked about in the beginning. It was just all over the place. I had some trouble with the, with the video and the audio syncing together in the beginning. So, uh, forgive me for all that while I was getting it figured out. And, um, also had, once I got it figured out, I was just just literally talking about nonsense and randomness. But I ended up talking about the environment and taking care of it and leaving a better place for the kids that come after us and all of our nieces and nephews and kids and grandkids and all that nonsense. So just just listen listen on for for uh, more information. In the future of the podcast, we are going to be adding all of the Sunset Grill episodes to this channel. So you are going to be getting a lot of uh, creepy content, a lot of conspiracy theory, a lot of conspiracy shit. Wow, did you hear that? That was nice. That was lamb from last night. Still haven't eaten today. I've been doing this intermittent fasting thing where I only eat like for... Eight hours a day, six to eight hours a day, but it's always at night. I'm a night eater. Anyway, that's that's beside the point. Didn't say that in the podcast. Um, all the sunset grills are going to be coming on to this this uh, this channel, so that's going to be new. And myself and Noah Byrne are going to be rebooting the sunset grill coming up pretty soon. That could be tonight. I'm not sure. I haven't gotten a confirmation yet, but uh, we don't know. So that could be happening. Also, um, Jamie Deluxe is going to be coming on the podcast to talk about the things going on in his life. He's uh, just recently gained uh, immense popularity on the internet and on YouTube, and um, about some really interesting subjects that a lot of thing, a lot of a lot of things that need light brought to them. And we're gonna we're gonna give him a platform to we're gonna give him a platform for that. So. He's going to be coming on him and Eddie, Eddie Tanner. Eddie Shanks is going to be joining him with that. And uh, Noah Byrne may be a part of that one as well. Not sure yet. Um, one of the kids who went to Stevens Christian Academy, the the school that I graduated from, that had a grand total of seven graduates ever. Like seven, seven kids graduated, and that was the only graduates that ever come from Stevens Christian Academy. It was me and six other people. One of the kids who was uh, who was in the lower grades when I was there as a senior is going to be coming on to do the podcast on the twentieth. He wants to to promote some of his music and such. Going to be having uh, Josh Gregory. He's going to be back to do his second appearance on the on the podcast to talk about some new ventures. He's going to be uh, going down, new changes in his life, things going on. Um, Patrick is going to be coming on. We're going to be doing the deep dive into the Harry Potter. That was supposed to be this episode that was going to happen on Sunday, but uh, the Super Bowl and all the all the nonsense going on with that prevented that. But we're going to be getting that to you soon. So stay tuned for all that. Please click subscribe on Facebook or on YouTube, Kelsey Hudgens, and click uh, follow on Instagram and Twitter and all the other nonsense. So do all that. And be a good person. Without further ado, episode number 101 of In My Stuff. Enjoy, motherfuckers. All right, YouTubers. Be good people. In a world full of shitty people, don't be one of those people. Peace, bitches. I'm looking over here at the TV like that's where the, micro- where the, where the camera is. I keep forgetting that it's not here and it's here now. Peace, bitches.